And uh, thanks so much to uh, Paul and the other uh, event organizers for uh, letting me be a part of this today. I have a great time today. I want to talk about crafting a new alliance. And I want to talk about that because libertarian outreach to the left hasn't made this much sense in a generation. Now, as a lot of people here know, four decades ago, libertarians built a thriving alliance with the new left. An alliance that focused on the twin issues of war and the draft, of aggressive violence and slavery to the state. It was fruitful and it was exciting, but it fractured for a whole host of reasons, including the fact that some people on the new left rejected the ideal of a peaceful, voluntary society and embraced revolutionary violence. Now, that wasn't true of everybody. It wasn't true of new leftists who were also libertarians, people like the great Carl Hess, people like Carl Oglesby. Unfortunately, not everybody in the alliance fit their profile. The New Left's commitment to decentralization, its opposition to hierarchy and authoritarianism, didn't seem to persist, uh, this is a further problem, as its members grew older and joined the establishment and started trying to use the system to achieve their goals instead of hanging on to their recognition that the system was itself the problem. Individual libertarians and libertarian institutions did reach out to the left, but there was no concerted attempt to rebuild the alliance that Hess and Murray Rothbard sought to construct. And perhaps it's not really very surprising that there wasn't. After all, when a president whose conservative opponents tarred him as a representative of the protest movements of the 60s, took office in 1993, a president a superficial observer might mistakenly have seen as a product of the new left, now, never mind the fact that he was more likely a CIA asset informing um, anti-war protesters, that president made sure everyone knew he wasn't really a peace leader. Far from it. He made sure by committing American troops to a pointless conflict in Somalia, by involving the U.S. military in an imperial war in the Balkans, by bombing a pharmaceutical plant in the name of fighting terrorism, by continuing the embargo that caused the deaths of vast numbers of Iraqi children, deaths his Secretary of State famously described as worth it. Worth it to who? The same president, whose conservative critics damned him as a pot-smoking long hair, sanctimoniously defended the drug war, including his decision to support his own brother's imprisonment for peaceful drug-related conduct. Who the hell cares whether he inhaled? I used to think that mattered. I realized it didn't matter at all. That same president gave us the murder of peaceful people at Waco and Ruby Ridge, and the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act, which paved the way for the Patriot Act. If that's what the heritage of the new left looked like, many libertarians doubtless thought they could be pardoned for not giving a damn. Now, conservatives also claimed to see evidence of the new left's influence on Barack Obama's presidential campaign. I, I don't know, and really I don't very much care, whether Bill Ayers really ghost wrote dreams from my father. What I do know is that when he assumed office, Obama seemed absolutely committed to serving George Bush's third term. More bailouts more giveaways to corporate cronies, and worst of all, more surveillance, more torture, more state secrets, more war. If this was the American left, what possible point could there be in a renewed attempt by libertarians to ally with it? But of course, by the left, I don't mean Democratic Party hacks. The Democratic Party has as much to do with the principled left as Republicans have to do with principled conservatives. <laughs> no, when I say that the time is ripe for a renewed libertarian outreach to people on the left, I mean precisely those people on the principled left who have begun to awaken from their dogmatic slumbers after writing blank check after blank check to Democratic politicians. The people who bit their tongues when they wanted to speak up about the betrayal of their convictions by partisan manipulators, the people who really thought they were doing something important when they swallowed the bile that rose in their throats, closed their eyes, held their noses, and voted for what they tried to convince themselves was the lesser evil. Now, I'm not just talking about them, though. I also have in mind the Greens who never stooped to voting for Democrats who believed in decentralization and local knowledge, who saw the effects of subsidies and privileges on corporate size and corporate power, and who have cringed to see the Green Movement increasingly supportive of managerialist technocrats. 
I'm talking about union workers who figured out that the Wagner Act framework has been sold to them as a way of protecting their interests when the real motivation behind it was to prop up the power of their bosses and stop genuinely radical self-help measures. I'm talking about the drug freedom activists who figured out that supposedly progressive politicians just want a kinder, gentler drug war and members of minority communities who realize that the nanny state is responsible for a systematic assault on people of color that has left unbelievable numbers of the nonviolent behind bars. I'm talking about principled leftists who haven't abandoned their goals but who figured out that their preferred means are ineffective, dangerous, and wrong. People who've realized that the problem isn't this or that politician but the state itself. That abuse by the state isn't a bug, it's a feature. Now, some people here will know that along with uh, friends like Robert Long, Kevin Carson, Charles Johnson, Brad Spangler, Sheldon Richmond, Tom Knapp, Molly Condoli, and Joe Stromberg, most of them at the Center for a Stateless Society, I regularly argue that libertarian is and should be a movement on the left. But I'm not trying to make that case here today. Put that to one side. I'm definitely not arguing that libertarians should in any way try to trim their sails in order to persuade statist leftists to like them. My point is just that libertarians can say to principled leftists, libertarianism is correct, freedom is right, it works, and you should embrace it, and you don't have to give up what you care about in order to do so. Mm -hmm. Libertarians care about things that matter to you, and you can and should achieve your goals using libertarian means. Now, if we ignore some cultural issues that don't directly involve state action, and of course the elephant in the room, which is the question of the state itself, and we just focus on the primary topics of, of mainstream political debate. There are pretty clearly three broad axes along which political disagreements could be mapped. I understand the categories I'm using aren't precise, they're not conceptually tidy, but they capture the way the debates often work in the real world. The categories are foreign and military policy, personal freedom, and economic freedom. Principled leftists ought to resonate with what libertarians have to say in each of these areas. In fact, resonate is too weak. Principled leftists ought to realize that libertarianism offers them what they really want in each category. That as libertarians, they can stop compromising, stop abandoning what they really care about, stop giving in to politicians who wouldn't know a principle if, well, you get the idea. <laughs> Start with foreign policy and war and the national security state. Start with them because they are absolutely central to libertarianism. If you want to know whether somebody really opposes aggression, find out what she or he thinks about war. And start with them because they're the most obvious bridges. The most simple and obvious thing for a libertarian to say to a principled leftist is, we're with you on the wars. Most importantly, of course, we're with you, we can say, because we oppose aggressive violence. We see unjust conflicts play out time and time again in ways that lead to untold devastation with little attempt either to prevent collateral damage or to compensate people for the unjust harms that result when bombs fall on wedding parties and children wake up in hospitals missing arms and legs. <coughs> At the same time, we can also point out a host of complementary reasons. We oppose the draft, which often seems to be an unavoidable concomitant of long, expensive wars as a kind of slavery. We oppose the tax and debt burdens that result from attempts to prosecute aggressive wars. And we agree with Randolph Bourne that war is the health of the state, that authoritarianism feeds on war. And so we can emphasize we're with you on the national security state, nourished by the government's endless wars. Libertarians have been in the forefront of opposition to the Patriot Act, to the invasion of privacy by government snoops, to the degradation and humiliation of airport visitors and airline passengers by the TSA, to the invocation of the supposed state secrets privilege to impede due process. You know, if there is any entity that shouldn't be entitled to keep secrets, it's the state. <laughs> Monopolists and thugs don't deserve privileges. <laughs> <laughs> to indefinite detention without trial, to torture, to the president's claimed right to kill non-combatant Americans without trial, to the national security letters that demand private information about us while gagging those who might otherwise tell us we're being watched. On all of these issues, very much of concern in principle leftists, libertarians have said what needs to be said loudly and clearly. 
It should be easy to remind principled leftists that the president isn't on their side, Congress isn't on their side, the Supreme Court isn't on their side, and perhaps most painfully, activist groups that stood up to Bush are all too frequently not on their side either. Groups that marched against abuses when they were Bush's and Cheney's abuses have been defamed by the con job that's persuaded them that Obama really wants to do the right thing, really wants to if they'll just give him a little time and keep supporting him. <laughs> if you're a principled leftist who cares about war and the national security state, the politicians and judges and professional activists aren't in your corner. So who are you going to call? <laughs> who are you going to call? War busters. <laughs> Torture busters. Surveillance busters. Libertarians. All right. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm so pleased to see folks from antiwar.com here today, to see Mike's t-shirt, to see the table back here with the, the wonderful bumper stickers. Antiwar.com, I'm convinced, is the single most valuable contributor to public debate on the part of the whole libertarian movement. Antiwar.com deserves your support. I hope you will buy stuff, give money. What antiwar.com does matters tremendously.